We'll see this guy. Tim Hudson, 39 years old. It's taken all this, all those years, all those pitches to get to this. His first World Series appearance. And when he takes the mound, the veteran right-hander who I think has been universally loved by any team he's been on, the A's, the Braves, now the Giants, become the third oldest pitcher in MLB history to make his first career World Series start at the age of 39 behind Jack Quinn and Jamie Moyer who was 45 when he started game three for the Phillies against Tampa Bay back in 2008 45 it's pretty amazing the one thing I, I think about Tim Hudson he's been on some good teams we would have thought he might have had an opportunity what an opportunity this year for him with the Giants. Bruce Bochy told us the manager he would think about that moment right now Tim Hudson going out to the mound after those 16 years and what was it 45,000 pitches wow here's the lineup for Kansas City that he'll face brought to you by Taco Bell sometimes you got to live Moss Escobar then Gordon moves up Lorenzo Kane hits third Eric Hosmer in that cleanup spot then Moustakas who was hitting ninth is now batting fifth Omar Infante homer game two Salvador Perez, Gerard Dyson is hitting eight to help the defense. He's in center. And Jeremy Guthrie, who starred at nearby Stanford collegiately, will do the pitching and bat night. And we'll give you the stats for Tim Hudson. He started out great, Tom. 5-0 and in his first seven starts here in his new home. Good ERA, but 0-5 over his last eight here at home and he was dealing with a sore right hip he threw the ball OK in the NLCS certainly threw great in the division series you have to believe the extra time will help the 39 year old no doubt one of the hidden secrets of the postseason a lot more off days and I think that does help older pitchers now you're talking about the all time active leader in ground ball percentage pitching against the top ground ball hitting team in the major leagues busy day for the infield Give you a look at the defense. No surprises, and that means that Ishikawa is still in there in left field. Still getting used to playing in the outfield. Gregor Blanco is in center. He's been hitting the ball great, playing great defensively. Hunter Benson right. Stay on the right side. It's Brandon Belt at first. He's been swinging the bat extremely well. Good defensively. Panic the rookie. Shortstop is Brandon Crawford. Pablo Sandoval at third. Buster Posey is the leader of this team. He's behind the plate. And Hudson in the middle of it about to bring the opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser the official beer of Major League Baseball. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. For more on Tim Hudson we will send it down here early to Aaron Andrews. Joe thanks and you guys mentioned just Tim Hudson and how much he's loved by really every team he's played for. Talk to a couple of his fellow pitchers Madison Bumgarner telling me he's thought about it every single day during this postseason how this team wants to go out and win for a guy like Tim Hudson and Ryan Vogelson saying it best today saying he hopes Tim really takes a second to look around and take it all in before he delivers that first pitch today. Tim. Thank you, Aaron. 214 big league wins. That is number one among active pitchers. And Hudson's active tonight. Escobar has been active in that leadoff spot. And here on Fox tonight, off we go in game number three. Adds hammered into left field. Down into the corner. This ball is off the base of the wall. And Escobar on the first pitch starts in with a double. He's waited that long to throw a pitch in the World Series, and he's greeted with an Escobar double. Well, the saving grace is that the ball stayed in the park. It's a high ball up. He's supposed to get it down. A little extra adrenaline. He might be high on his pitches, and Escobar jumped on it. He has changed this lineup, and I really believe the lineup tonight for the Royals is their best lineup all season. Just be the way they're able to match up. And look at the look on the face of Tim Hudson like 45,000 plus pitches in the big leagues and bang a double to start his first World Series first inning. I think he thought that ball was gone. Here's Alex Gordon. In the number two spot rolls over to first advances the runner belt to the back one away. 
Jim Reynolds is a home plate umpire tonight. Ted Barrett, who walked in looking like a million dollars with the fedora and the suit. I think it was unbelievable. He's at first. Hunter Wendell's dead at second. Jeff Kellogg is the crew chief. He's at third. Jeff Nelson down the left field line. Eric Cooper in right. And Jerry Meals, who was on the field for the first two games, is now in New York. World Series cameras rolling. I find it interesting to hear the defense is playing back. We've watched the uh, Giants in the postseason. They brought the infield in early on certain occasions. Now you got them back with the runner on third, one out, playing to keep away from a big inning. Well, here is Lorenzo Kane. He's been red hot. And he lays off the pitch down and away ball one. It was interesting to me to see Tim Hudson throw a four seamer with his first pitch. It's really not his bread and butter. He'll live downstairs with sinkers, cutters, and splits. Rarely he likes to change eye line levels with the four seamer up. There's nothing to change off of. And Escobar, like a lot of these Royals hitters, they love jumping on first pitches. Something Lorenzo Kane talked to us about before the game. Look at first pitch fastball. Didn't get a fastball. Laid off ball one. Trying to put the Royals on top here in game three. That's inside. Two and up. Well, I thought it was interesting, Tom. Two pitches, and they got a runner at third base. And now he takes two pitches. Four pitches in, he's in big trouble. Two and oh count. Runner on third. That's the two seamer. That's the bread and butter. And he looked in and wanted that one. Kane waiting for a 2 0. He went around 2 1. No appeal by the home plate umpire down to Ted Barrett. Jim Reynolds said straight one. Well, this is when you want the umpire to check. You know, you always complain as a hitter can he see the bat and the ball at the same time? That's the same take he took on the first pitch. Feel better if they appeal and they call it for you that way. Again, infield back, they'll give up the run for the out. That's a strike, and Kane can't believe it. It's two and two, and neither can the dugout for Kansas City. He's shot. Yeah, Jim Reynolds behind the plate, oh. working his first World Series game. He's not been behind the plate since the regular season. Was scheduled to work game four of the ALDS between the Royals and the Angels, but that series was a sweep. But Jim Reynolds actually to stay sharp, he went to the Arizona Fall League to see some pitches. Here comes a 2 2 from Hudson. He checked his swing on ball three and a nice piece of work by Posey to block it. It's a full count. On deck is Eric Hosmer. Our broadcast is also streaming live on the Fox Sports Go app and FoxSportsGo.com. And for coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune to Fox Deportes. And I like the intelligence right there of the pitch, right? You got him. Knows that he wasn't getting the ball in on sinkers and check swing on the ball away. See if he chases one. See if you get a call. Here comes a 3 2 pitch. That's to the shortstop. Crawford will go to first, and the Royals take a game three lead. And that's just producing a run. Oh, you're absolutely right, Joe. I was going to, sorry to cut you off there. That's great hitting. It may not look like a base hit in the clutch, but you get a bad call on you. You check swing on a slider. You know you got to swing, put a ball in play. And all he's doing is trying to make contact. With them back in the infield up, you just put the ball in the middle and pick up the run. That's the difficulty with a guy like Hudson rather than Bumgarner. He doesn't have really the ability to put hitters away with a swing and miss pitch. Pitching the contact, nice job by Kane. And now with the bases empty, two out. Here's Hosmer. Ball one down and in, and not to make too much of it, but coming on the air talking about the Royals playing like a National League club, maybe even a National League club from the 1980s. They get the double, they get a ground ball to move them over, and a ground ball to score. You know, they're not laying back waiting for two run, three run home run. No, and I think the comparison as we look at this split from Hudson to Hosmer, the comparison is your three hitter. Lorenzo Cain will drop a bunt on you in a heartbeat. That may not happen on most American League teams. They're going to be swinging away. Here's a 1 1. That drives Hosmer off the plate ball, too. They have not shown Hosmer many fastballs in the zone in this series, and that's why it's kind of a show pitch. We've been throwing him a lot of changeups, and in Hudson's case, the split. 
25th birthday today for Eric Cosmer and his present is to bat. That's a fair ball in the World Series. A high throw in the air. And so the birthday boy is retired. He talks to the umpire as he grounds one over the back. What a that brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Same look. Bruce Bochy keeping it simple. Gregor Blanco, Joe Panic, Buster Posey at the top. Pablo Sandoval, Hunter Pence, Brandon Belt middle. Travis Ishikawa, Brandon Crawford, the shortstop batting eighth. Then Tim Hudson. And here is the right hander, Jeremy Guthrie, who has really finally fulfilled promise in the big leagues, making a start here in game three with a one run lead. Remember those multiple choice tests you had in school? It seemed like there were multiple right answers. That's what it's like facing Guthrie. Five different pitches and throw them at any time. Love to throw the curveball, especially first pitch to left handers. We'll see with Blanco, who led off game two with a home run into right on a 3 2 pitch. And the young right hander, Cordano Ventura. A strike from Guthrie. There's Angel Pagan. He left a huge void in this lineup when he went out with a bat back in September. He's been dealing with injuries last two years. Lead off hitter, the switch hitter, the center fielder. So they are not at full strength. They also obviously don't have Matt Kane, who had a procedure on his elbow, the great right hander. Not Tommy John, but it knocked him out for the year. Here's a fly ball into left center field. To his right, it's Dyson. You know Dyson's in center. But the rest of them. Dyson's right, you've got Alex Gordon, three-time Gold Glove Award winner, former third baseman. And over to our right, Gerard's left. You got Lorenzo Kane. That is the best defensive outfield you'll find in baseball in a tough outfield here in San Francisco. Hosmer and Infante on the right side. Escobar and Mustakis on the left side. Salvador Perez catching Guthrie. There's panic. Ball one. You know, unlike Hudson, you want the infield. He's going to get a lot of ground balls. You want good infielders. I, I think the way Ned Yost has done this with the outfield, I, I believe Guthrie's more of a fly ball pitcher. Likes to challenge guys with the heater. One ball, one strike, and now the Giant fans grown with a strike call. Well, as long as he's consistent, and that's all you're doing in the first inning, you're establishing he's going to be a low ball umpire. I mean, that ball's down. If he's going to stay there all night, you better have. That is in Fonte. Two down. Go back to the play. That ended the top of this first inning on the ball hit by Hosmer. Fair or foul? Well, you get a look here. I think the, the key for me is I was watching Hosmer. If he's not going to complain about it, then obviously the umpire gets this call right. And here's why. Watch him fall. Where he falls at, his vantage point now puts him in the perfect position to see is it fair or foul. And this is just flat out cool shot right here. Yeah. Awesome. The two out, nobody on. Here's Posey. Straight one. Yeah, I like the point you made, Harold, about the outfield. He's a gutter keeps it on the ground, but in this park, you got to defend a lot of territory. We saw that in KC, but here it's the asymmetry of the outfield wall makes it so difficult. And those outfielders are playing here for the first time. Here's the 0 1. That's outside. The ball one strike. You might be wondering at home, how do they get ready for that then? You come out early. They had a workout here yesterday. Took a lot of balls off the walls, a lot of fly balls, trying to figure out how it carries. That's into right center field and caught. Great jump by Lorenzo Kane. This is as good as there is at reading a ball off the bat and the closing speed. Kane in right, Dyson in center. Yost making the call defensively. Mustakis, Infante, Salvador Perez for the Royals, who got a first pitch double off the bat of Escobar. Moved to third on a ground ball by Gordon and scored on a ground ball out by Kane. He made a nice catch to end the first. Up there jumping on the first pitch and fouled off the bat of Mustakis. And you saw that sinker in on Mustakis. That's why. 
He's hitting right into the shift. I mean, good luck trying to get a ball between first baseman belt and second baseman panic. Shake hands. How you doing? Talked about it before game two that panic works on ground balls out in that outfield. And the tricky part for any infielder who goes out into the shallow part of any outfield on a shift is that once that ball gets to the grass, it will snake. Zigzag around, and that's what makes it hard. That is foul of side out of play, strike two. I think also the game changer for second basemen now is you have to have the arm strength. If you go one step to your right and you have to go two, that becomes as long as the throw as you're making from shortstop. That is a long throw to get that guy at first. So you have to have the arm strength as well. Watch a panic work. It was really a pleasure to see the arm and everything, the accuracy, the power, the strength behind the throw. Here's a one-two from Hudson. The other part of it that he was talking about, Tom, is that small window with that weird angle that a second baseman has with belt going to the bag, and there's a lot of moving parts there. The throw has to be accurate as well. A lot of things take you out of your comfort level. You might have seen Brandon Crawford, the shortstop, with two strikes exaggerate the shift even more. The information saying with two strikes, he pulls it even more than he does before two strikes. He's trying to shoot it to left. The count's still one and two. And then you throw a split away, inviting him to hit the ball the other way. Yeah. And one last note too on the window throwing that ball to first base with a left handed first baseman. You can pull the ball a little bit more on your throw and he's in a better position a right handed first baseman almost puts you in a real small. I got to be perfect because I can't throw the ball up the line or I'll hit the run. That's a 2 2 count now from Tim Hudson. We're officially on to the next top. Stockis two for six so far in this World Series hitting 257 this postseason hit just 212 during the regular year glad you are spending your Friday night with us game three of the World Series and that's into left center field so forget the shift he hits it to the left of second base and Moustakis is serenaded by the moose calls out here in San Francisco. Well, he's doing a nice job of really driving the ball all over the ballpark. Watch this the leg kick and the timing. That's been the biggest difference for him. You're seeing a little bit more of a closed stance early in the year, a lot more open, and it had to force him to come way back. The balance was off, the timing was off, and he really struggled miserably. Here's Infante, who hit a two run home run in that five run sixth inning in game two. He did it. It was his first home run in 158 postseason plate appearances. Third longest all time without going deep. That's inside ball one. Lemke leads that list. A good player he was for the Atlanta Braves. And Monty Smith, who was an Atlanta Brave, and Cardinal and a Royal. There's a 1 0 instead of check on the runner. In case you're wondering, Moustakis is one of the few guys in this lineup that does not run much. No, but I think the Giants are thinking maybe a hit and run possibility. You want to keep him close. One for one trying to steal a bag this season. That's it. Zone is more up to down than side to side. This falls away. They thought maybe they'd get a call on the check swing. Let's see if he holds up in time. Ted Barrett got this one right. Well, that's why, as a hitter, you want him to check. You know, you just feel better if he calls it a strike or a ball from the first base umpire than the home plate up. Probably the last point in the calculus of when to run. The most important points 
pitcher on the mound. He pitches to contact any throws ground balls. You're not likely to get a swing and miss from Infante. You are likely to get a ground ball. Good activity on the bases. Get some movement, not going, and there is a swing and a miss, two and two. Well, we've watched Hudson settle down now. That ball's not high anymore. He's getting down where he'd like to be at the knee level and down. And we're seeing him get good action on his pitcher. Can you blame him for being a little excited? Not at all. Here comes his 2-2. Two -two. It squirts away, Mustaka stays put as Posey kept it close enough for count. Doubled up on the cutter there. Like Mustakas didn't get a great read, I'm not sure he would have gone anyway. City in the second. Yeah, I think they tried to get a little too smart right there. You know, it's a lot what you were talking about, Tom. They're going to get ground balls and probably get some contact, so they're going to send Mustakas, but they come back with a slider instead of maybe challenging Infante to hit a ground ball. I know he hit a home run the other night, but that was a ball that's up. Well, so now with two on, nobody out, we will look at the grip of Tim Hudson. What he brings to the plate. Well, that split, he taught himself that pitch before he went to Auburn. That's been his best. There's the changeup. Throws it a little bit harder than the split. That cut fastball you just saw, he threw three of those. And once in a while, he'll break in a curveball, especially the left handers. He's got a right handed hitter up now, Salvador Perez. After the single and the walk, and Perez seems to have his stroke back. Ball one down from Hudson. Perez homered in game one, the only run against Bumgarner. And then had that big two run double and the run scored in the sixth inning, also lined out in game two. And Hudson's playing with fire right now. Perez's got to stay patient, get a ball up, and see what happens. Ron Wotus on the right, Bruce Bochi, the manager on the left. Wotus, the bench coach, and that's a 1 1 count. Didn't look too sure on that swing, did he? No. <laughs> Gerard Dyson on deck, and then the pitcher spot. This is such a key hitter for Tim Hudson with two on and nobody out. Dyson, the guy on deck, hitless in this postseason. And then Guthrie, who's got five hits in his big league career. Good pitch on the hands and the count one and two. This is what I love about the National League game. As bad as it looks, first and second, no outs, he's got a chance to get out of this. Great movement on that pitch right there. But imagine he gets a double play ball, then you got Dyson, go ahead and let him do whatever, and you get the pitcher. There's Tim's wife, Kim, sweating through it. Husband in a jam. Here's his one two. That is it hard in the left is Chicago. Nice play. What a way. And a big out for the Giants picked up by Travis Ishikawa. It's a great play. This ball just continued to carry on him. I think he thought it might die, and that's why he ends up diving backwards. It continued to have a flight. You got that good backspin carry on that ball right there. And it just continued to take off on him. How Kim react? Good look. Just working over that towel. She told us last time, what? It's a train wreck trying to watch her husband pitch on the mound, especially in a jam. Well, that's a big out now with Gerard Dyson, the number eight hitter. Did hit 269 during the regular season, looking for his first career postseason hit. Takes a ball. Guthrie on deck.
Been a lot of work for Tim Hudson already. Here's his 1 0. Strike one. Two good sinkers right there, but Joe, it's to me reminiscent of game two with Jake Peavy on the mound. Missing location a lot in the first two innings, got away with it, and then found it in the third. You got to believe Tim Hudson here, waiting 16 years for this World Series start, is also just trying to get himself into this game into a good rhythm without too much damage. So Peavy, he got it together, pitched well, third, fourth, and fifth, lost it in the sixth. Brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Panda Pablo Sandoval, the breaking ball for a strike. He's the guy who has reached base in 25 consecutive postseason games. I think he's got this date circled on the calendar. It's over 24, two years ago. Fourth player in baseball history to hit three home runs in a game right here at AT&T Park. Kicked off the World Series against Detroit. And he started it against Justin Furland. Strike two. Sandoval then pinch then belt. That multiple choice question. <laughs> Salvador Perez, you got to go through a lot of sides to find one that Jeremy Guthrie likes. Gonna check in with Ken Rosenthal here in a moment. One two pitch is fouled back. You can rip by Sandoval, who is four for nine with a couple of RBIs in this World Series. I just love how he locks in. You know, some guys mentally go to another level. He seems to have that focus and be able to crystallize it with every game. Told us the other day if he feels like he's getting worked up, too intense, too nervous about things, he has the ability to take a nap in the clubhouse, which he did prior to game two. That is ball three, a full count. Let's clear the last of the plate, too. And his plate discipline has been extremely good for anybody, but especially. This guy loves swinging back. Got under it, flies it into center, and Dyson can cruise on in for out number one. And for more on Jeremy Guthrie. Joe, no matter how Jeremy Guthrie fares tonight, it will be difficult for him to top in sheer quantity what he did pitching for Stanford on May 31st, 2002. Bay Area fans remember it well. Guthrie went 13 innings to beat Cal State Fulton in an NCAA regional. He said yesterday he threw 147 pitches in that game. Of course, he didn't have the bullpen then that he does today. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. I didn't get to even introduce you, Kenny. You're ready, just loaded for bear here on game three. Kenny's dangerous after an off day. Yes, he is. He, he, he works, man. He's got so many stories. Oh. I'd like to say he's rested, but he's always working. Here's Pence. Took a strike, now ball inside. How about the big story Kenny's working on today with Joe Matt? Everybody running around. Joe kind of shook up the baseball landscape today. Awesome. Woo! He is finished with the Rays. In case you don't know what Harold's talking about, the terrific manager for Tampa Bay has opted out of his contract today. And what he's been able to do down in Florida, with what he's been handed over the years, he squeezes a lot out of that roster. And 
over 162 games where a season can really at times become monotonous. He has the ability to guide a team and really keep it fresh. Oh, I think he's one of the best. And think about what they've lost now. The GM Andrew Friedman. The ace David Price and now the manager Joe Madden. Here's a 2-2 to Pence. Full count. So where does he go? I'll put you on the spot, Tom. My call is Chicago with the Cubs. I really like the job Rick Metzger has done there, but Joe Madden, how do you pass up if offered that opportunity to win in Chicago? Nothing better. Who's going to make the play? As Hosmer has to come off the bag, and Escobar did all he could. This is terrific. Watch the last hop kick on it. And then he decides to go barehand. That ball kicked away. He's able to come with it. I mean, you don't get a much better play than that. To make the throw on the on line on target would have been very difficult. Talked about the arm strength. That's like a third baseman coming in. You got to open the full hand. You saw a great picture of it right there and let that roll in. You got to have big hands and you got to be able to have some heck of an instinct. We haven't seen plays like that since Omar Vizquel was pulling stuff barehanded like that. How about Hunter touching the base with his toenails? He does something once again that makes you smile. He's on with one out. Here's Bell. He's been swinging the back great. Everybody talking about Sandoval and Hunter Pence. Posey, Panic, the rookie. Ishikawa, the hero in game five of the NLCS, but Bell has hit 327 over his last 16 games. Yo one. One ball, one strike picked up by Perez. Now I want to show you the defense of Kansas City. You see Escobar is the closest guy to second base. A lot of teams will take the Shortstop and move him over. They've taken actually Mustakas and moved him by the second base sign right there. He's the guy in the middle. So they put the third baseman in the middle instead of being the pivot guy on a double play ball. You leave the shortstop in his natural position to turn the pivot if you get the ground ball. I mean, I know the statistics say what they say. And obviously the Royals are expecting Brandon Belt to pull the ball here. There's some mental aspect to this too. It has to be for a hitter who's looking out at an entirely wide open left side of the infield. And for the pitcher too, there's a mental aspect. With people who are not normally in places they are. Runner goes. Throw down by Perez and got him for out number two. And that's another reason you leave the shortstop there. Who takes throws down from sec to second base? The middle infielders do all season long. So now you don't have a third baseman taking a throw down. You got the shortstop. Watch this tag by Escobar. He gets it, swipe tag, and he's in and out with the tag. And I don't know. It was close. It was close. He got him. He did. Oh, two out, nobody on, and a 2 2 count. Great call by the ump, huh? And it's Hunter Wendelstead. Out in front of it is Belt. The count remains two balls, two strikes. How about that job by Sal Perez getting rid of the ball, the footwork? There's a reason why that guy's won a gold glove and up for another one this year. Ned Yost was scouting him when Yost was in Milwaukee, and a pop time that he got on his watch of 1.83. That's in the center of base hit. Second of the inning, one on, two out. Just to finish it up, anything below two is great. Talk about the pop of the ball in the mitt and the pop in the mitt of the fielder covering second. Watch his footwork. Watch him clear. That's a base hit here, Mount Belt. Fastball, I'm sure Guthrie wanted farther down. Belt's not missing any mistakes. So he is on, two out. And Ishikawa, who made that good defensive play in left field at the top of this inning, is digging in. I mean, that was such a big play because it changes everything Gerard Dyson could do at the plate. Ball one. Because you have the pitcher hitting after you, you got the guy that can fly, but you've taken away one of his weapons. That's the bunt. He's not going to bunt with the pitcher hitting behind him. As a result, they got a double play ball out of it. Changed up. Ishikawa way out in front of it. One ball, one strike. 
He's got a good one. You can see that there. A little bit different grip from Timmy Hudson, but the same run away from the left-hander. Strike two. That changeup is the toughest pitch in baseball to hit. When you can back it up, you got to have some velocity to make it work great. Or have a big mix. And here's a fastball that comes back with off the changeup. But the, the key is it's the same arm angle. So as a hitter, you're reading arm angle and arm speed. And when he can pull the string on you like that, tough to hit. Around the plate, two and two. Number eight man is Brandon Crawford. He's on deck. The Royals will have Guthrie, the pitcher, Escobar, and Gordon to the plate in the third. That's it hard into right. Kane is there to end the inning. He's already made two good plays in right. Goodness gracious. That decision by Nick Yost paying dividends. Here are the first two innings. Tonight we stand united in the fight against cancer. With our partner stand up to cancer this year, we lost one of the game's all time greats, Tony Gwynn. That awful disease. And we will be honoring not only Tony Gwynn, but that incredible charitable endeavor that does such a great job raising money and getting. Doctors from all over the world to combine efforts to find a cure. Yeah, that's Tony's family right there. You're looking at wife and family and grandkids. His wife Alicia. Yep. Zero two. Guthrie takes ball. That was a tough one to take. You know, when you lose Tony Gwynn, somebody I've known my whole life, you know, really since about 17 years old when I first got to see Tony with his afro playing basketball at right. San Diego State. And just the smile and the personality is what you remember about Tony. And the laugh. I close my eyes. I can still hear Tony Gwynn laughing. Here's a one-two pitch from Hudson. Guthrie just chops it. Right side for Panic. That little short hop. One out. You know, every uh World Series, you see players that kind of stand out that you didn't know a whole lot about. Escobar starting to fit in that, I think, in a lot of people's eyes. Panic and Hosmer kind of jumped onto the radar for me as I've watched these guys through the postseason, night in, night out, do something special. This guy, the bare hand play, the home run the other night, the double tonight, I, I think he's overlooked how good a player he is. He waits for the first from Hudson and takes a good tailing pitch for strike one. He got nominated as a finalist for a Gold Glove Award. Royals already have three of those on the field. He's looking to be a fourth. And Doug Melvin, the GM in Milwaukee who had Escobar, said he's the Andrelton Simmons of the American League. That's down one ball, one strike. And I don't know if there's higher praise for a defensive shortstop than be compared to Simmons. Not yet gotten that kind of attention. Okay, they're right there. Alex Gordon, he's got a gold glove. Escobar traded from the Brewers in December of 2010. Played in every game this year. So he is tough. He is strong and he showed his range and ability on that barehanded try in the bottom of the second. What I love about him, too, and Salvador Perez, they always have a smile. They come to the ballpark with a smile on. Those are the guys that when you go through a struggle, they're going to get out of it quick because it's not going to bother them. They don't carry it with them. Crowd gets into it with a one two count. Escobar with one out. Cetus jumped on the first pitch, doubled and scored in the first inning, and he is now four for nine in this World Series. Must be the perfume, Harold. <laughs> yes. He true. started Escobar. You smell good, you play good, I guess, huh? You don't know what Tom's talking about. The Victoria's Secret perfume is what they've been wearing. Really? Yes. Huh. Scored it on for the game. Their BP. There's a one-two pitch. Not that baseball players are superstitious. Ooh. I mean you got 
Some guys on Kansas City wearing women's perfume in these big games in the postseason. You've got Alex Gordon, the left fielder, who's worn the same hat all year and has to spray Axe body spray on the hat just to make it wear. It smells so bad. <laughs> that is one aromatic dugout. Go with the perfume. Look at that batting helmet. You can only imagine what his cap smells like. He brought it out. Let us. <laughs> I, I held it. <laughs> and then, then what'd you do? Disinfect it afterwards. <laughs> right side. Nice play. Panic. He got him for the out. And a dig out by Belt on the back end. What a play. Well, that's the arm strength we're talking about. Watch him go down, and he knows how strong his arm is. He's going to go to his knee, make sure he's got it, and stand up and still have the strength to throw it over there and get him out. Most guys are going to get to this point right here and start thinking about how do I hop up and get rid of it as fast as I can. He almost sets himself up and then lets it go. Good call by the first base umpire, Ted Barrett. What a play by the rookie second baseman. Not phased by the big stage at all. Strike one on Alex Gordon. Hudson has been helped out by his defense twice. Ishikawa last inning. Now panic to his right here in the third. And strike two. There's a mindset as an infielder when you know a guy's going to throw great balls down and get ground balls that you come ready to play. In the dirt or at knees and below from Tim Hudson. Looks like he is settling in. Seven of his eight outs on the ground so far. Good sign for Timmy Hudson. Defense on both sides. We are just into game number three of this World Series. These evenly matched ball clubs. It's one nothing Kansas City tonight after two and a half. Three bottom of the third inning. Crawford, Hudson, Blanco, eight nine and one hitters for the Giants down by one. Strike one from Jeremy Guthrie. Got three a 13 game winner during the regular season. This is his first tour through a postseason. His second postseason start. Started game three against the Orioles. Pitched well. Got a decision in a two to one win. A guy who was drafted 22nd overall by Cleveland. First round back in 2002. Came up. Never got a win for the Indians. In 16 games. Off waivers by the Orioles started to settle in, traded to Colorado, traded Kansas City. He's won 33 games over two plus years with the Royals. Right side, Infante. One away. We had a chance to visit with Bruce Bochi, the manager of the Giants. It's brought to you by DirecTV, and the first question was about how Tim Hudson has settled in and how happy that would make the veteran manager. I am. Uh, he's throwing the ball well. I mean, the first pitch got away from him. They ambushed him, but uh, you know, he, he settled down and uh, he's hitting the spots well, keeping the ball down, and uh, he's got a, a good breaking ball change up going with it. Yeah, and uh, you've got a bullpen that, for the most part, is rested and ready to go. So you've got a lot of help out there if you need it. We do. Uh, we we haven't covered, and uh, you know, hopefully he can get us somewhat deep in the game and keep throwing the ball the way he's throwing. Uh, he'll be fine. Yeah, and meanwhile, last question that includes Tim Lincecum, who uh, he told us before the game is okay despite what happened in game two. Right. Uh, we had him checked out and uh, he felt much better after that game than the next day. He could just barely feel it, but today he's good to go. He, he threw, uh, you know, during our warm-ups and uh, says he's all set to go. He's resilient and threw some pitches a couple days ago, but uh, he's ready. All right. Go back to work. Thanks, Paul. Right, thanks. thanks. They were concerned. Lindsey can pitch so well. By the time he was out there into his second inning in game two, as Tim Hudson is waiting for a 2 2 pitch with one out. Guthrie will have to throw another to Hudson.
much and Lincecum really put his name back on the short list for guys that Bruce Bochy could count on. He hadn't pitched since the end of September. He pitched a good first inning and then left in that second inning of working game two with a bad back. But okay to go. Here's another 2 2. Well hit into center. Back is Dyson. Hudson gave it a ride. Two out. And we saw Lindsay leave the field with that back injury. Just something didn't look right the last two pitches that he threw. And it was interesting listening to Bruce Bochy now talk about his stuff before those two pitches was so good. Now he's actually moved up in a kind of hierarchy that Bochy has in terms of high leverage spots. Now that on a close game, you might see Linsekin before you would see Hunter Strickland or Gene Machi, who've actually moved down in that hierarchy. Now here's Blanco, who fly to center his first time. Two for eight with a home run in this World Series. That gets away from Guthrie, ball one. Yeah, I thought Linsa comes out and getting the work was important because it's been so long between. And we're in for a long series here. He's going to come into play eventually. As he, as he did in 2012 out of the bullpen. After dominating in 2010 out of the rotation. That misses ball two. A little earlier. See if they get back to getting that again. That's a strike. Three and one. The pitchers so far have been using all of their pitches, which is key. Neither guy has a dominant put away pitch. So these hitters are so far off balance. Here is a three one now. Got under it into right center and easy for Dyson. Let's go to the fourth inning, game three. Who's coming up? Kane, then this man, Eric Hosmer. And Mike was stuck in. Royals still lead 1 0 after three. Especially on a night like this, we hope that the initial indication of rain for Saturday isn't as bad as first thought. Both teams, at least to this point, have been told that. There will be showers tomorrow for game number four, but nothing that should stop play. Lorenzo Kane, a ball and a strike. It's the only ballpark, really only stadium in the country where the worse your seat, the better the view. The players have no idea how beautiful this ballpark is and this view is. Here's a 1 1. That's slicing down the right field line. Hanks will get there for the out. What a play in right. We've seen three of them. Two by the guy that just hit it. And now one by Hunter Pence. Well, this is a triple. This ball gets away from him right here. It was slicing to the corner. It's going to kick around once it gets down there. Watch where Lorenzo Kane is going to be. He sees this ball slicing, so he's turned it on already. It's a heck of a play by Hunter. Great play. That ball's working away from him. And like Kane, that first step is a key. Here's Hosmer, 0 for 1. Takes a strike. Looking for his first hit in this series. Bottom of this inning for the Giants panic Posey and Sandoval. One ball, one strike. Fastballs he's seen over the plate. Just missed it. Now that's a ball he should hit, but he pulls off, taking a little shot, maybe being able to put one in the cove.
Tim is rolling. When you're mixing that changeup in with that hard sinker, it's almost impossible to hit it. Yeah, you knew after that fastball, you're coming back soft with the split. He wasn't going to double up. Great fastball hitter. Again, knees and below for Tim Hudson since that really first pitch of the game. Hudson, who was with the A's in the division series 2000 through 2003, they never got past it despite all that talent. Strike one to Mustakis. Then he was in Atlanta in 05 and 2010. Finally got to the NLCS this year, finally got to the World Series. He's pitched well this postseason, two no decisions. His team has won both games. See the shift on the infield. That floats in for strike two. In a great groove right now. He and Guthrie both won the ball terrific. Singled over the head of the shortstop, at least that position, his first time up. Three for seven in this series, reaching for it right into the teeth of the defense. Panic. And we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Big bats coming up. Panic, Posey, Sandoval for the Giants, who trail by one. Still performance. Here is a ball to Joe Panic. This year, Canerco and Rollins tied in the voting. Sal Roberto Clemente's wife, Vera, along with MLB Chief Operating Officer Rob Manfred and Mike Stinson of Chevrolet. There's a 1 0. Panic fouls it. And after an outstanding 18 year playing career, as you look at that gorgeous shot, and the sun setting here in the West Coast, 439 home runs. Paul Canerco is finished as a big leader. It's going to be missed. It's had a huge impact. Obviously, you won the Roberto Clemente Award, but as a player as well. That is a strike. Meanwhile, Jimmy Rollins, 2007 NL MVP, World Series champion 08. He grew up in nearby Alameda. He set a milestone this year, the most hits in Phillies history. He's saying a lot. Absolutely. And a great guy. One ball, two strikes. Panic. Gets under it. Coming to get it is Lorenzo Payne. That leads us right to this interview with Ned Yost. It's brought to you by DirecTV. And the first question about how he's gone with the defensive alignment and the good plays by Kane already, it's worked out. No, it's worked out great. You know, both of those guys, Dyson and Kane, have tremendous range. Um, you, you take Alex Gordon in left field, and uh, it's a uh, it's harder to find a team that has better outfield defense than we do out there right now. Yeah, I would agree with you. The best in the big leagues with what you've got aligned in the outfield. Meanwhile, Jeremy Guthrie, you have to be pleased with the way he's throwing the ball. I am very pleased. He's changing speeds. He's commanding the ball down. He's moving it in. And he's just doing a great job for us so far. Are we overstating it when we say it's a race to the sixth inning or a race to the seventh inning? Is that the way you manage a ball game? Well, that's exactly right. You know, we try to get into the sixth and seventh inning with the lead or tied and turn over that good bullpen we got. All right, my friend. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Right. Buster Posey almost got his first extra base hit over his last 54 at bats. It's the longest drought of his career, and that was fouled by inches down the left field line. Almost as if Guthrie knows he's got that outfield behind him in this big ballpark and saying, guys, go ahead, knock yourself out, hit fly balls, my guys will get them. One out, nobody on. That's inside. Well, Tom, that definitely plays into it. You know, you go into a ballpark or a conversation on how you're going to attack a club, beat me to the big part of the ballpark, and they can pitch that way at home as well. Here's a one one. Meanwhile, Ned Yost. He is one of the, in my opinion, he is one of the reasons why the Kansas City Royals are in the World Series here in 2014. Well, we always talk about players improving. We don't always talk about the managers, and they don't often get a chance to improve before they're gone. This guy's improved as a manager year in, year out. The poise. Here's a ground ball to Escobar. Posey. Two out. 
knowing your players, being able to settle in, and the confidence. Huh? They're ready to run him out of town in Kansas City, even this year. When you look at three things you need to know. He appeared five times as a coach, all those great years with Atlanta. One time as a player with Milwaukee. First as a manager. Where's number three as a tribute to his very good friend, the late Dale Earnhardt Sr. And a former taxidermist. And he hunts with Jeff Foxworthy in the offseason. He's got an interesting, unique group of friends that he hangs with. And as Sandoval takes the ball outside. Tommy told us he thought he knew what being a competitor was until he met the late great Dale Earnhardt. And then he said, that's when I learned what it means to be a competitor. And that was during the strike of 1994. He went and worked on Earnhardt's crew in the last eight races. He told us uh, his job, I love the title. <laughs> Rehydration engineer was his title. Sounds fancy, right? He's basically the water boy for Dale. And he said, well, all the crew guys were working on the cars. He got to sit and talk to Dale every day. One and one to count. Said with regard to Dale, he said, Who are your friends in the NASCAR world? Dale said, Nobody. I said, What do you mean, nobody? You've been at this for this long, you have no friends, no other drivers you're friends with? He said, I never want to look in my rear view mirror, anybody look in their rear view mirror and see me coming and think, Here comes my friend. I'm trying to beat everybody else. Here's one to the right. And Funchak is showing his range. It's a good game. Awesome defense, a little bit of hitting. Good pitching. pitching. After 4 1 0 KC, back after a word. From your local Fox station. In January on Fox. Well pitched game, fifth inning, game three, 1 0. Infante Perez and Dyson, 6 7 and 8 hitters for Kansas City. Got that first inning run on an RBI ground out by Kane, and that's it. Well, I think Ned Yost nailed it. I know he did for his own pitcher, but Hudson's doing the same thing. Off, keeping off balance, a little hard, a little soft, and throwing a lot of strikes and getting ground balls. Here's the 0 1 to Infante. Walked his first time. One ball, one strike, and just maybe the finish for the night on Yost, at least for now. After the good second half the Royals had last year, he thought his young team would come out of spring training this year and just take off. He said they didn't. I mean, they were up and down and up and down, and that's how their season went. As Infante grounds to Sandoval. One away. And he said, literally, it wasn't until the middle innings of that wild card game against the A's as they were trailing to John Lester that he felt the click in the dugout. They came back. 7 3 in the eighth inning, one in extra innings. And here they are with only one loss this entire postseason. Wasn't that fascinating? I mean, he made it sound like literally it was like a light switch. Okay, now we believe we're not just a good team, but a championship team. Down four runs to John Lester, eighth inning. Try to get him to think like that the last two seasons. Here's one back to Hudson. Wyatt outs now. Two out in the fifth. Guys, you know, one of the things you, you do as a hitter, you figure out what are they throwing. When you start getting these calls and the umpire stays down both sides, he's going to live on the knees or lower and make those calls. As a hitter, you got to adjust. That's why we're seeing the aggressiveness and so many ground ball outs. You have to go and attack the zone where it's at. Now, ideally, do you say, yeah, make him get the ball up? But if he doesn't, you don't want to continue to live in the hole. You got to swing the bat. That's why we're seeing such a quick pace and well pitched game. Here's Dyson was taking on the first pitch. He, with his speed, is a threat to bunt if for no other reason to get Guthrie out of the way. The pitcher hits behind him, and because of that, Sandoval way in at third. Broken back to the bag is Belt, and another good inning for Tim Hudson. 11 in a row retired in this World Series game three by Hudson. Halfway through game three, one nothing Kansas City. Black for that. Um, it's nerve wracking, I'll be honest. But um, um, we're so proud of him. This is so fun. We're trying just to soak it up. But um, it means so much. So you care, you know. And um, we're nervous. 
Yeah. You said today you tried to make it just like a normal day, do homework, go for a bike ride. How hard is that? Um, it's hard. You know, we try to act like we, we're not um, on the, end of the edge of our seats, but we did some homework. Um, we did some laundry, just, you know, normal day, and let Tim kind of do his thing. He did some fantasy football trades or something on his iPad. So, um, but it, it's so fun. We're so thankful to be here. Thanks for letting us, Buggy. We appreciate it. Buggy, thank you. Good All right. All right, Joe. All right, that great couple. In it together, Kim and Tim. Tim's doing his part. He's looking for some offensive support. Hunter Pence first up. Bottom of the fifth inning in a one to nothing game. Royals on top. That's line to Infante one away. Well, we're at that point in a series where you've had enough familiarity with the other team. That positioning becomes very important. A lot of line outs. We've seen balls hit it, guys. We've seen some nice plays, but you got to be in the vicinity to make those plays. Now you're starting to understand how guys are going to be approaching the pitchers as you see the shift of the Royals put on. So Hudson's retired 11 straight. Guthrie now is retired 8 straight. Ball one up and away to Brandon Bell. And I don't think that was a bluff right there by Bell. If he's able to push one down the third base side, they're not going to honor you. You take the bunt and keep moving on. Moving the line forward. Ishikawa on deck. Hard hit, but right at Infante. That robs Belt of his second straight hit and fourth of this series tonight. Telecast. Sponsored by Chevrolet, find new roads. There you go, Guthrie and Hudson. Guthrie's no young kid either, 35 years old. Hudson, 39, and they have been terrific tonight. So impressed with Guthrie and the way he's mixing his pitches. This is only his second start in 28 days, and right now it's any pitch at any time. Ishikawa is completely fooled straight one. And again, that's the first pitch breaking ball to left handers. Third time he's thrown that tonight. Rarely have you seen him throw the same pitch in the same spot. Two pitches in a row. Playing Ishikawa to pull on the infield. Dead straight away in the outfield. The 0 1 pitch. He pulls it to the right side. More quiet outs. Got three to the bag, and that's 10 straight retired by the Royals right-hander. Sixth inning rolls in, game three, still one. Within a pitcher's duel is strong defense, and we've seen that from both sides here tonight. Look at the night for Hudson, who, in the words of Bruce Bochy, was ambushed in the first inning on that first pitch to Escobar. He doubled in the left, two ground balls later. We had our only run of the night. Here's a strike into Guthrie. From Hudson is retired 11 straight. Grounded out his first time. Five hits in the big leagues. Why not? Try and push a bunt strike two. Well, I like how the pace of the game is going. They're getting the ball. They're going and not thinking a lot. But also hitting your spots. And that does so much for your defense. You can anticipate. You can position yourself properly when your pitcher is locating and hitting the spots. Chunks it off the plate area, and that's panic. Away. Right now, Joe, I think we're at the really part of the game that's most important because of the bullpens in play with these two teams. The sixth inning critical. And with that, we look at the pitching comparison brought to you by HP, and these guys, Tom, are doing exactly what their two managers hoped they would do, didn't know they would do, getting this game into the and part of the middle, if that makes any sense. Yeah, listen, I, I think it's almost like the chess masters will talk about controlling the middle of the chessboard. In these postseason games, it's the middle of the game that you need to control. The fifth and sixth innings are the critical innings because both teams have such excellent bullpens. I feel like when they have a lead after six, that's all she wrote. One out, nobody on. Escobar, the only guy who's touched home plate and made it count tonight. As the count even a ball and a strike. And Tom, as you talk about those middle innings, that's when the game speeds up on you. 
And both these managers have done a great job of recognizing, all right, I'm going to get my pin up and not being fooled. You know, Hudson's at 69 pitches. Pitch counts down. But all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. But I think they're well aware of that. They've thought ahead. And, and I love that in the meetings. They're already knowing where they want to go before the game starts. There's a 1 1. That's up the middle, and Escobar has his second hit of the night. And he's on with one out here in the sixth inning. Tonight's telecast sponsored by Walmart, introducing Savings Catcher. Go online to enter your receipt. By AARP, real possibilities. And by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. One on one out for Alex Gordon, who is hitless in the World Series. And that will get the bullpen busy for the Giants. When you're a sinker ball pitcher, you have to live with those hits. I couldn't count the bounces to center field, Harold. That was probably uh, I'm sure it was double digits. Off the bat of Escobar. Giants keep an eye on him. He's one of the many who can run this lineup. I'll see this swipe 31. During the regular season, has won this postseason. Yeah, and I find it interesting as we see Lopez warming up, looking at the lineup. You got Gordon, then Kane, and then Hosmer, and Mustakis. So they're getting him ready for the two lefties if they get to that point. That's in the air to center back is Blanco on the run. Walk in, stays in play. Escobar will come all the way around and score on an RBI double by Alex Gordon. It's 2 0. Oh, there's the boom, boom. That ball stayed in play. It hit close enough to the wall that it didn't bounce out of play. And then it was easy for Escobar. To score from first. And I like the read of Escobar being able to see that ball because you saw Blanco throw the glove out like he was going to catch that ball. Watch this right here. He's 10 feet from it. As a runner, sometimes you might freeze. But watch Escobar. He sees where the ball's at. He knows where he's at. He puts his head down and goes to score. Good fall for the deep. The sixth inning once again. It's really hard for these starting pitchers to get through a lineup a third time. Alex Gordon just knocked in his 10th run of this postseason. That's the most this postseason across baseball. And here's Lorenzo Kane, and with the left handed hitting Hosmer on deck, we had a visit from Dave Rigetti. This figures to be it for Tim Hudson. Lopez ready to go. Kane with an RBI ground out, and he's lined out to right. They got to pay attention to. The runner out at second base. Gordon able to get a huge lead. Kane at the plate. Yeah, that's why you see guys oftentimes still on that first pitch. Now he's alerted everybody, and all of a sudden here comes panic. A little bit closer to holding. So you had that opportunity, that element of surprise. It's not a surprise anymore. Off the end of the bat, strike one. Joe, I think you're right. This is it. Tim Hudson want to get the point where you're not going to let Kane hurt you. Well, meanwhile, I would think that the same will apply in the bottom of the inning as well as Guthrie has pitched in this pivotal game three. Anybody gets on that bullpen for Kansas City will spring into action. No question about it. He has that formula: the HDH, Herrera, Davis, Holland. So the rookie left-hander Finnegan factor is a one-one. That is up around the helmet of Kane. Ball two. Yeah, he talked about probably his last batter, the right on right. You may think, well, Ned Yost did a favor to Bruce Bochy by having the lefties back to back in Hosmer and Mustakis, but I liked what he did. He's saying, I want my best lineup early in the game, win the game early, especially get a lead after six. I don't care about matching up against the bullpen late. Win the game before you get into the bullpen. Well, they lead 2 0 here in the sixth inning. Kane trying to add to that. That's 
single. Does not advance the runner one out. At first, two out in the inning, and now we'll see if the pitching change is made. And Bruce Bochy is called back to the dugout for a second by Dave Rigetti, but out he goes, and in comes Javier Lopez. Hudson, first World Series start, and he pitched well here tonight. Can only get the loss if he gets a decision. And we'll hear the appreciation on his way off the field. Chris Christie, special time of 8 a.m. It's live NFL action on Fox early Sunday morning at 9 Eastern. Lopez into the game runner at second, two out, and the batter is Hosmer, strike one. There's the night for Hudson. Got into the sixth, could not get through it. Leaves down 2 0, and there's Tim Lincecum. Not the way he walked off the field. He left in his second inning of work in game two. We had seen the end of him in this World Series. Not the case. Good to see him able to go. Strike two on Hosmer. Yeah, pitcher spot to up second in the bottom of the inning. This gives Tim Lincecum plenty of time to start the seventh inning clean. Be as dynamic as the big three at the end of the pen for Kansas City, but they are basically as effective with Lopez and Affel and Romo and Casilla. They can come at you a lot of different ways. Yeah, they get it done differently. They get it done with the matchups. And it's tough when you haven't seen guys very often, especially a left on left in a situation like this. The guy who's got three rings, three World Series rings, brings it. He can rip there on a hittable pitch by Hosmer. Yeah, he's left two balls out over the plate right there in this at bat that Hosmer missed. Look at what the Giants bullpen has done and the runs that they are on. I mean, Lopez going back to 2010, the guy on the mound right now, no runs. 17 straight appearances. Experience. The Royals with the power pitching. They live in the fast lane. Giants relievers. They're in the right hand lane with their blinker on. Here's the 0-2. It's like, yeah, when would you give up a run last? Eh, four years ago. What? Affel, you saw his run. He's got 19 straight appearances without allowing a run in the postseason. Number one all time, the great Mariano Rivera. The 23 straight. That is slicing foul off the bat of Hosmer. I think this is an interesting pitch, 3 2, because you have Mustakis on the on deck circle. Normal, a, a 1 2 count, I'm sorry, but normally you would have probably a right handed hitter after him, so he may see something else to hit. Instead, they're making chase. He's leaving balls over though. That's three balls in this at bat with two strikes that he's given Hosmer an opportunity to hit. Not as sharp as he's been. That skips in, scooped up by Posey 2-2. Two two. You can see with each pitch Hosmer sees, it seems like the comfort level goes up. He's never seen Lopez before, so he's going to score with each pitch. He talks about the key against any left-hander, especially this one, that front shoulder. Leave it in as long as possible. That's an indication of how well he's starting to see him. You don't foul that ball off if you're not seeing him pretty good. 
This is a ball, tough pitch. He's just battling. You saw that front shoulder stay in. The minute that opens up, you leave early. It's a ground ball to second base. That's a good timeout right here, and a good conversation between the two. Maybe changes signs around. Back to the plate is Posey. MLB fans join the biggest seventh inning stretch with your best. Take me out to the ball game. You might be featured in game four of the World Series. Go to T-Mobile.com slash the big seven. Lopez trying to end this top of the sixth right here. And the at bat will continue at one point, guys, during this game. The two right-handers, Guthrie and Hudson, between them retired 20 consecutive batters. It's the longest stretch in a World Series game since Game 5 of 1956. Dodgers and Yankees 23 straight. That was the perfect game. Ball game put up by Don Larson. That streak, by the way, broken by Mickey Mantle. Home run. Here's a 2-2. That is outside. Close, but ball three. Take a look at this. I'll tell you what, Jim Reynolds has been consistent. He's been calling the ball down. We knew that. We saw it early. Not giving anything on the edges. That's been it. You know that as a hitter, you know that as a pitcher. 11th pitch of the at bat is shot into center field. Here comes Gordon. There's no throw, and it's 3 0 Royals here in the sixth. Overused a lot in baseball is a great piece of hitting. Oh, that was terrific. You know what? That was a fantastic at bat. You could tell, you could see it coming though, with every pitch he measured it. And when he was fouling balls off that you, Lopez would hope would be an out pitch, you knew he was in trouble. And he missed on three pitches before, and that time he didn't make him, he didn't miss it. Great at bat. The 11 pitch at bat. Ends with the RBI hit up the middle from Eric Hosmer as he picks that spot to get his first World Series hit to score Gordon and close the book on Hudson. Five and two thirds, three runs on four hits, with two strikeouts and a walk. That was like seeing Javi Lopez three different at bats, seeing that many pitches. And again, the comfort level just kept going up, and Lopez didn't give in. Batter now is Mustakis with a count two and oh. Well, I felt like with the other left-hander on the on-deck circle, seeing that he was leaving balls over, the at-bat Hosmer was having. Maybe you nibble a little bit more, a little bit more, and if I lose him, I lose him because I got another fresh lefty on the on-deck circle. Gordon, his first hit in this series, the same for Hosmer. And the count now three and zero. Oh. And talking with the Royal hitters when facing Lopez, one of the things they said is watching Kansas, watching the, the Cardinals face him, you got to stay patient. And they looked at Matt Carpenter's at bats. He had great ABs. That's a strike. We're talking about the pitcher spot coming up second in the bottom of the inning. You know, Bruce Bochy is just dying it for Lopez to get the out right here and not have to bring Tim Lindsay come into the game. Pitch hittable. Mustakis fouled it back. Three and two. And here are the reactions. The end of the 11 pitch at bat. The RBI single up the middle. And the reaction back in Kansas City. Are they having any fun back there? Yeah, they got a DJ in there. They got everything going on. The reaction from Tim Hudson on the hit by Osborne. Going. You know, it's so fun watching a full series. The first game with Bumgarner, Giant Baseball, they dominated. No chance for the Royals. And there wasn't a whole lot of good things to say about their offense. Tonight, this is a Royal game. Base hits, speed, defense, and great pitching. 
Stock has waited on that pitch and fouled it back. Oh, yeah, and they are not going away, are they? Fewest strikeouts in the big leagues, and that's paying dividends in this inning against Javi Lopez. RBI double by Gordon. RBI hit with two out by Hosmer. He's at first. And another 3-2 pitch to Moustakis. Got him to end the end. The two runs are on the board for Kansas City. And again, it's the sixth, as it was in game two. They add a couple. RBIs by Gordon and Hosmer. Guthrie back to work. Crawford strike one from Jeremy Guthrie. It was the first pitcher since Greg Maddox in game two of the 96 World Series against the Yankees with no walks and no strikeouts through five innings of a World Series game. Fifth all time to do it. And he leads 3-0. He's retired 10 straight. Right side, base it. Lead off man is on for the Giants here in the sixth. And we'll see if that gets the bullpen active for Kansas City. Yeah, and all of a sudden here comes Big Mike Morris, and the wind starts to kick up to blow towards left field. This is a nice piece of hitting on a breaking ball, stays with it, drives it to right field. Get them going. And the answer is yes when it comes to the bullpen. They will get busy. It's Kelvin Herrera. You see the flags are starched. Blown out to left. Sergio Romo on the other side. The wheels are turning here in the sixth inning as Michael Morris will dig in. Started the first two games of this series as the DH. Two for eight for the RBI. Takes a strike from Guthrie. I thought Morris getting those at bats as a DH was so important to get some rhythm and some time. And he came off the big pinch at home run, then got some more ABs. He should be locked in. That's strike two on a 90 mile an hour fastball from Guthrie. Looked like he was trying to leave right here. Harold Ball away from him. Didn't get it. A good run. But he feels more comfortable. He may not be locked in and get it, but it's a lot more comfortable at bat coming off seeing some pitches consistently. George Brett sweating through this one. On this cool night in San Francisco. 0 2 pitch. Foul back. And he was right on it. And interesting to see Herrera up because, in a perfect script for Ned Yost, it's the seventh inning. But he told us if there's a game to be won in the sixth and they need to get him in then, I will do it. I'm not trying to worry about finding a bridge to get these three outs to the HDH formula. That's Herrera Davis and Holland. Another 0 2 pitch to Morse. That one is hammered, but foul. Crushed by Michael Morse. Forget the win, that didn't need any help. No help at all. But that's what happens when you get good at bats for Mike Morris and allow him to have some consistent ABs. He just looks better. Mm. Got out in front of it. But the sound of the ball hitting that bat. Why was that loud? Actually, a pretty good pitch. The last time we, we saw this, they went away and got a ground ball. The Giants have not scored in their last 10 innings. The longest for San Francisco in a World Series play. Since they went 11 straight scoreless in 89. That is outside. Two and two. Game of inches, right? Was just off the plate. And that even got a groan from the fans here in San Francisco. Great job by Jim Reynolds. Catcher set up outside off the plate. Hit the target but out of the strike zone. I love his zone. He's been consistent. Time call by Salvador Perez. He wants to talk. 
you know, we talked about Guthrie coming up picture. His guy's got the outs tonight, and he's using everything. Here's a fastball to get the pop up right there. Here's a little change up to get a ground ball. There's another fastball, a little cutter. A little cut on that one from defense, and then a curveball. You know, and that to me is the, the growth and change of Jeremy Guthrie. He used to be a guy that drove 95. Here it is, fastball all the time. I dare you to hit it. He's taking a little off. He's really learned now through the years how to pitch. Trying to get around the leadoff hit by Crawford. He has seen a heart stopping foul ball off the bat of Michael Morris in this at bat. The 2 2. That's over, but low. And now Morris turning in a good at bat. Second in the inning. We got the strikeout to end the top half, and then Morris just shot one down the line. And with that, the night for Guthrie is finished. How good has Morris been off the bench? The pinch hit home run to tie game five of the NLCF. His first 11 were at 100 or more miles per hour. Runner at second, nobody out. Three to one game. Blanco takes at 96. Ball one. You know, it's so funny when a guy throws 96, we go, uh oh. huh. That's still bringing it. 96 is nothing to sneeze at. That was a long effort for Herrera in game two. Not just five outs, but a half hour break in the middle of it. That's ball two. Game Joe, he came in with a lot of rest, and Ned Yost knew he had the off day behind game two. That's why he could stretch him for five outs. This is not preferable, because obviously he wants to get more than three outs, but right now, he needs a strike from Kelvin Herrera. And I think it's a challenge for Herrera. You know, Jim Reynolds is not going to give you that ball off the plate. We've seen that. And if he doesn't get the ball down, he's the guy that throws more up. And the tying run is on. Here comes Dave Island. More work to be done in the bullpen, and now it'll be the left-hander, Brandon Finnegan. But the left-handers are back to back here with Blanco, who just walked in panic. And you get Posey and the switch hitter Sandoval. As Dave Island will talk to Kelvin Herrera. Buying time really more than anything. Slow down your pitcher, but also buy time for Finnegan to get himself ready. You can't allow if you're Ned Yost, the Giants, to get back in this game without having to swing the bat. There's a rookie left hand. Time runs on with nobody out. And a calm rookie named Panic digging in. I'm curious how they handle this here. Swing the bat, move him over. What are you going to do? Royals are pinched in. Up there to hack. Strike one at 98. Wow. And he did try to ambush him, to borrow a phrase. Only the seventh time he swung at a first pitch this whole postseason. Herrera's trying to throw a strike. Be aggressive.
two. Well, I'm sure some people are probably questioning Ned Yost why you go away from the formula right here in the six, but I, I agree with it. You're in the middle of the lineup, heading through. This is a critical half inning for the Royals. And the runners advance like a good punt to second and third with only one out. I mean, Tommy, you talk a lot about a high leverage situation. Do you not want your best guys coming out of the bullpen? Oh, absolutely. I have no problem with the issue. The issue right now is how to attack Buster Posey. Joe, you talked about it's been a long time, career long drought without an extra base hit. He's thinking base hit here. Well, who else would the Giants rather have? They may have hotter hitters. The guy on deck certainly would qualify. But what the Giants have needed since this guy came up in 2010, he's seemingly been there to deliver. Buster Posey. Been a rookie of the year. He's been an MVP. Base hit can tie this game. Ball one. Buster got to see him the other night in Kansas City. And again, I just keep going back to those things that hitters look for, that memory bank that's right there. I've seen a star. He was ready to swing had it been in his zone. That'll get a run home. Infante stays down. One run game, RBI ground out for Posey. Over to third is Blanco. We're right back in that familiar zone for the Royals in their bullpen. A one-run -one game. Morris with a big hit of the inning so far. I like the way the Giants battled here and picked up that run. That's a big run. You know, if you want to pull within that one run, now they're one swing away from tying the game at any point in the ball game. Only in the sixth. Here's Sandoval. Pablo, 0 for two. He's got the tying run at third, two out. Strike one just pumped in there at 101. He threw a pitch in game two, clocked at 102. The fastest in the World Series since they started clocking these things. And again, Jim Reynolds with the low strike. Time run at third. Late swing at 99 and the count nothing and two. I don't know how he fouls this pitch off. 99 chin high. Great bad ball hitter. And a guy who's reached base in 25 consecutive in the postseason. 0 for 2 tonight. Set up. Rounds to first. Hosmer to the bag, and Herrera keeps the lead. It was three. It's now one. The Giants keep coming at you into the seventh. We go game three, 3-2 three, KC. Back after a word from your local Fox station. Thunder Direct TV. Seventh inning, one run game, 3-2 Royals on top. Sergio Romo. Who started the season as the closer takes over strike one to Infante. Yeah, Romo actually was up in the bullpen before the Giants scored their runs. There's both G either changed his mind with Lincecum or maybe Timmy just wasn't quite right warming up in the bullpen. Infante with a walk and a ground out. Trying to get it started again for Kansas City. Breaking ball, and Infante hammered it foul. He's hot right now. He's not missing many pitches. The great, the great Joe Montana. I worked with a Hall of Fame quarterback my other day job. In his mind and for his money, that man is the best to ever do it. Pretty awesome, man. There's Bill Walsh teams here in San Francisco. Incredible. 
Even when Joe went to Kansas City. Great. Sit next to Peter McGowan. Here on this now breezy, chilly night in San Francisco. I like the Buster Posey did with his target before that pitch. He doubled up on the slider. Buster pretty much had his glove in the other batter's box, reminding him, don't hang it like you did the last one. Infante right up on the plate, waiting for a one-two. The sixth inning is the inning of reckoning. Two of the three best teams in baseball. When you give them a lead after six, winning percentage 92% and above. And how about in the postseason? You're getting better than that. Perfect 7 0 for the Giants, 4 0 for Kansas City. And look at the trouble for everybody else this postseason. Salvador Perez 0 for 2. He's lined out. Took a good catch from Ishikawa and left. To get him with two on and nobody out at the time back in the second he tapped back to the pitcher in the fifth. And slider catches the corner to the surprise of Perez strike one. I'll tell you what you can watch Romo you know he's going to throw a slider but he throws two or three different speeds on the slider. So it's one thing to sit on one but he changes it up on you on how hard it's going to come in. Saw the reinforcement again from Buster. Showing the glove way outside. Get it there, and he does. That ball broke like a wiffle ball in the backyard. And the Giants won it all back in 2012. Romo took over as the closer for Casilla. Here in 2014, Casilla is the closer. He and Romo switched back. That wicked pitch dips low, ball one. I'm watching Buster too. He's back there doing all kinds of things. He could have to reach. He must have got in trouble earlier in the year by leaving balls out over the plate because Buster's making sure don't hang one. It's looking like a guy reaching across the table for the mashed potatoes. Perez homered in game one. Big two run double in game two. Moved up and in in the batter's box for that swing and the count still one and two. Trying to trick him with a fastball. Hard to throw it too far outside for Perez not to swing. But you see his, his first move is to dive and try to go get the ball. Hit in the air to left, back is Chicago in front of the track. Give me the in game box score brought to you by Geico. For Kansas City. Escobar right there again, two out of three. He has scored two runs. Gordon with an RBI double. And in that two run sixth inning, Gordon scored on the RBI hit with two out by Eric Hosmer. That's the difference in the game. Hosmer solving Javier Lopez. For a base hit into center to at the time make it 3 0. It's now 3 2. Here's Gerard Dyson. 0 for 2, 0 for 9 this postseason. Strike one. Joe, I'll throw a comparison at you. The way I'm watching Gerard Dyson in his stance, it reminds me of Ozzie Smith from the left side of the plate. Yeah. He puts his hands in the same position he does that little rock. Look at him. Wearing the right number for that, too. Here's the 0 1. Number one up the middle. That will keep the inning alive. And Herrera is going to stay in the game and hit the pitcher, the number nine spot, no pinch hitter in a one run game. Which is interesting because now Dyson's in a spot where he will test, you would think, at some point, Buster Posey and try and steal a bag. I'd let him steal. Herrera, it's his first plate appearance ever. Well, be interesting. He's still second. And then they pinch it. 
Right now, nobody's up in the bullpen. Finnegan was warming in the bottom of the sixth. But Ned Yost does not want to take Herrera out of the game and clearly didn't want to use a double switch when he brought Herrera in. Stepping into the bucket. <laughs> Strike one. And yeah. this doesn't look like there's any chance for Herrera here in the seventh. He was leaving. He's getting out of dodge when that ball came out of Romo's hand. The other thing you don't want if you can't see is you don't want Dyson to get thrown out on the steal and have Herrera have to lead off the next half inning. By that point, they'd be using a pinch hitter. Yeah, Herrera's going to be gone. See, we're finishing sentences now. I saw that. I saw it season coming. number one. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. One on, two out. <laughs> you don't want none. How about that? You've yeah. never had an at bat in the majors or the minors, and now you're in the World Series. Go get him, kid. <laughs> I'm not getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. He's thinking about choking way up. <laughs> Stays down closer to the end. The 0-2. There goes. Rock him out. And Herrera, his job is to go back and pitch in a 3-2 game. Give you game summary here in game three. An early run put up by Kansas City. The two starters really good. Neither one of them could get through six. This is when this game gets fun. Seventh inning, bottom half, 97 from Herrera. Royals up by one. Pence first up. Finnegan getting loose for the Royals in their bullpen. Belt on deck. You want action? We've got it. Here's a 1 0 pitch. He was trying to pump one out of here and tie it. One ball, one strike. This is big at bat for me because Hunter Pence is their leading hitter in the Giants roster on fastballs 95 and above. He can square up anything, even the ball over his hands. Success Giants hitters against Kelvin Herrera 0 for 11. And again, this is a matchup. You, you ever feel comfortable against Herrera? But you feel comfortable with a little bit. That's on the inside corner. The count evens 2 and 2. Tell you what, Joe, here's another thing that scares you when you're watching Herrera when you're facing him. You see the two seam, the four seam fastball run in on you. When you got a guy on the mound squinting to get a sign and he's throwing 100, you're not comfortable. I'm sorry. Herrera did not allow a home run all year. Last one was toward the end of July 2013. Count stays two and two on Hunter Pence. I saw him trying to go higher than high on Hunter Pence. Well, there's only one thing you can be looking for. Look at him squint, man. And there's only one thing Hunter's looking for. It's got to be that fastball. You, when he throws that hard, you got to honor him. Power against power. Change up. Gotta believe it's triple digits coming here. That's a walk to start the inning. And they hit bat by Hunter Pence. Tying run is on here in the seventh. Well, a little bit too low to swing at or be called a strike. To maintain that velocity at 97 that low just tells you how great an arm he had. 
Well, here's Bell. He's had two good at bats. He has ripped a single into right and lined out to second, and he's been locked in. On deck, Ishikawa in the bullpen for the Royals. Finnegan, the left hand. Strike one. Bruce Bochy has used his biggest weapon off the bench already, Michael Morse. And he delivered with an RBI double, and later a run scored last inning. Big rip, strike two. You can get away with balls in the middle when you throw that hard. You just can't time it. Pence is the ninth leadoff man to reach for the Giants in this World Series. They've scored six of the previous eight times. This ball one tails away at 97, one and two. He's got one thing on his mind. I think they'll hold the runner. He's spinning around for the release. It's just here it is. I dare you to catch up to him. Pence is going to run on 3 2. And because he throws so hard, and Perez is already throwing the ball great behind the plate already, I, he doesn't expect him to run there. He got the foul tip and the hang on. Well, now you've got back to back left handed batters. The first one, this man, Ishikawa, who ended the NLCS with a pennant clinching home run in game five. Yost is out of the dugout and he is going to go in this spot to his rookie left-handed pitcher. And I think you're asking Herrera to throw a lot of pitches to get out of this inning. He's only gotten more than 34 times all year. And now you're going instead with the platoon matchup for lefty on lefty. He pitched this year in the College World Series. Now he's in the World Series. Finnegan takes over in June by the Royals. From TCU, Brandon Finnegan, tough to pick up. Perez batting for Ishikawa. And he takes a ball up and away. He has not worked, as you look at the numbers for Juan Perez this postseason, the right handed batter. Finnegan has not pitched since game two of the American League Championship Series. It's been a long layoff. Here's a 1 0 pitch. That's in the air to left. Right there, Gordon, two out. You heard the bat snap right there. You know, the one thing he's been able to do in between that time is throw simulated games, try to stay sharp. I think if there's one player on this roster who's used to throwing with big rest in between is a college pitcher. You know, he's the weekend guy. He throws once a week. You know, that type of stuff. That's what you do in college baseball. So it's not as regimented as the major league season is. Which I got to pitch every fifth day. I'm sorry. I'm starting. That doesn't happen in college. It's been two weeks, just about. He hasn't pitched since the 11th 
of October and now because he's the shortstop and not coming out he gets to face a left handed hitting Brandon Crawford Finnegan 93 up and in ball one Ned Yost intentionally kept Finnegan out of games one and two really one sided games late because he didn't want the Giants to go to school on Finnegan. Different delivery, but guys, what I liked about him after that last out, Mike Moustakas came over with the baseball. This kid had a big smile on his face. He looks very comfortable out there. Crawford tonight, one for two, got the rally started last inning with a hit. There's a breaking ball that misses. And guys, David Ortiz, who worked for us at Fox and Fox Sports 1 for games one and two of this World Series in Kansas City, said he couldn't see this guy. Finnegan is tough on left handed hitters and a kid who made his major league debut at Yankee Stadium on September 6th with two scoreless innings. Struck out Derek Jeter, I believe, in that first appearance. And was good in that wild card game. The comeback effort against the A's earlier this month. There's a strike to a one. Yeah, the hitters will tell you real quick if they can pick him up or not. And that's high praise coming from David Ortiz. You think about all the lefties he's had to face from a left handed specialist to left handed starter. Bench at first, two out. And now a 2 2 count. Hunter was there with nobody out, a strikeout of Belt, on a 3 2 pitch from Herrera. And the kid. 21 years old. Brandon Finnegan is on for the biggest two outs of his life. A very good breaking ball. It's kind of in between a slider and a curve. Table setter is first up. That's Escobar. He's two out of three with a double, a single, two runs scored, and almost gets hit by Romo. Juan Perez stays in the game. He's in left. Defense gets a bit better. Perez flight out as the pinch hitter for Ishikawa in the seventh. Escobar, Gordon, and Kane with a left hander at felt getting loose. That's a strike. One ball, one strike. Joe, I spent my whole career in the American League with the DH. I'm telling you, watching the National League game night in, night out is so fun. It's a better game. Strategy, look at all the players that have gotten involved in this game. All of it, it's a better game. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Good pitch from Romo, strike two. Totally agree, Harold. All these games where all these people who say, you know what, we need the same rules in both leagues. Forget it. I'd hate to lose this kind of baseball. I actually like the dynamics of different rules, different leagues. Ray Davis getting loose for the Royals. That's their formula. Davis in the eighth, Holland in the ninth. They lead by one at the moment. A strikeout for Sergio Romo. His third. He's just nasty. He continues to change different angles and speeds. And look at this. Right here, you're thinking fastball is a hitter. Now, all of a sudden, he's going to drop down on you a little bit. You might think sidearm. If you haven't seen him before, then you see this and you go, ouch, because that hurts. Whew. 
So that's all the different looks he gives you. And that's the anatomy of that great slider. Does a great look about how the hand and the fingers generate spin. Body and arm velocity. And that was a spin master. Double switch here. Crawford coming out. Affeld, the left hander, coming in. And Affeld takes over with Alex Gordon at the plate. First pitch, hack and strike one. Here's the double switch. Joaquin Arias takes over at shortstop. He'll bat ninth. That means he leads it off in the bottom of this eighth. The pitcher will bat eighth. Where Crawford was in that pitcher is Jeremy Affelt, who, as I mentioned, has gone 19 straight appearances in the postseason without allowing a run. What a valuable part of the bullpen he is. That's in there sizzling at 94, strike two. We had a great conversation with Jeremy today, getting a chance to meet with him. You know, he was 95, 96, 97 when he was with the Kansas City Royals years ago. Changed his arm angle. Extended his career out. Created in 2006 by current Royals GM. Dave Moore, that was close. As he popped up, started to, about to throw it around as ball one. Yeah, you saw I felt go, wow. Yep. I thought he had this one, especially because we've seen a low strike call tonight. Here's a one two now. Two and two. We were talking about him getting traded by Dayton Moore, and he was saying how it did him a favor, made him really appreciate the game, fall in love with the game again, and get himself going. Dayton sent him a letter and said, You need to take a break, change your scenery, and learn how to love this game again, and he did. Got to the World Series in 07 with Colorado. Good rip by Gordon, and now here he is. He's been a centerpiece in that bullpen. For Bruce Bochy in the postseason since 2010. Gordon with an RBI double in that two run sixth inning, and then he scored on a two out hit by Hosmer. That's the difference in the game. Reaching for it, flies it into left. Easy for Perez. Two out. Earlier this evening, representatives from MasterCard presented a generous $4 million donation to stand up to cancer co founders Sue Seelig and special guest celebrity ambassador Eric Stone Street. That man is everywhere. Yes, he the is. funds were raised with the help of MasterCard cardholders through the Priceless Causes campaign. Go to priceless.com slash causes to learn more about how you can get involved. Two out, nobody on. Here's Kane. Ground ball to short. Arias fresh into it. Makes the play. And sends us into the bottom of the eighth. Wade Davis will take over. He's getting set to go. Nine, one, and two coming up for the Giants down one. Mobilizing your world. I gotta admit, just my favorite part of coming to this ball. It's run. awesome. <laughs> Wade Davis takes over. And so now here we are. I mean, whatever's happened to this point, Ned Yost has it where he wants it. However, it turns out he's got a lead, albeit a one run lead, with Davis now and Holland ready for the ninth inning. Arias to lead it off, took a strike, and now a ball. And as Ned Yost would say himself, my job is done at this point. Like the rest of us, sit back and watch. Hey, you know you've had a great year when you're Wade Davis. You have more wins than you have runs allowed. Nine wins, eight runs allowed all year. Just filthy. Strike two. Well, from watching from this vantage point where we sit in the press box, you can see why he gets on top of the ball and he's. The angle that he creates throwing at the hitter. You hear that all the time. He creates such a great angle, but you can really see it from up here how you can't pick up that ball till late and it's cutting on you away from the hitter. Where well, his career has taken off since going to the bullpen. And then he can light up a radar gun at 90 
27 2 and 2 he came with James Shields in that deal prior to last year with the Rays for Will Myers the outfielder is Paul America's minor league player of the year what a pickup defensive swing still two and two and he's a guy who was a starting pitcher last year late in the season I went to him wanted to convert him to the bullpen and Ned Yost thought I've got a two or three inning guy and he said Ned I'd much rather go three outs at a time one inning go as hard as I can and that's why you saw the velocity go from 93 to 97 98. Just one for two in this postseason. So just his third at bat he stays two and two. Tonight's stats brought to you by Better Money Habits, powered by Bank of America with Khan Academy. Here we are, World Series tied at a game apiece. The winner of game three has won the series 67% of the time, 37 of 55 times. It's been tied 1 1 after two. Here's a 2 2 pitch. One out. Well, he's living on the outside half, and Arias did a nice job of fouling balls off. But this is the equalizer. He can come right back inside and paint on the inside corner on you and get you. Front door cutter. Wow, at 93. Tough for a right handed hitter to pull the trigger on that pitch. Well, here's a left handed hitter, Gregor Blanco, with another lefty, Joe Panic, on deck. Giants came into tonight having won their last six World Series home games. Here's a punt. Perez out in front of the play. What a good play. He got him. Two down. The all-star catcher, and he had to be perfect, and he was. Wow. That's a gold glove play. And here's what's so impressive. The bare hand, but he snatches it back towards himself. Watch him gather and pull it back. Right and put his arm in a position to throw the ball all in one motion. A lot of guys will scoop and keep it forward. He pulls it back, shuffles it in the hand, and gets rid of it. Beautiful play. That was a great shot with those big mitts that he has, that big hand. The ball was kind of back in his hand, had time to get it into his fingers, and threw a strike to first base. Now two out for panic. Who homered in game five of the NLCS takes a pitch in the dirt ball one. No strikeouts for the starter Jeremy Guthrie. But Herrera struck out one Finnegan one and now Davis one. He's got two out in the eighth. Spread out on the infield and in the outfield as panic the rookie takes a strike. He's rolling. Davis is on fire. No matter where Perez is moving back there, he's hitting the glove. Strike two. I mean, all you gotta do is look at the glove. When he gives a sign, sets the glove, just leave your eyes on it. He's gonna die. Amazing. From Herrera to Finnegan, now Wade Davis. Time called by Perez, the catcher. The ninth inning, the Royals will have Hosmer, Mustakis, and Infante against Athel. He went around and two strikeouts in the inning and a shutdown piece of work from Wade Davis. And the reaction of the power and light district back in Kansas City. We go to the ninth inning of game three. Royals hanging on as they lead by one. What a game and more of what we are accustomed to seeing this postseason. The average margin of victory in the postseason through the LCS on each side was under two and a half runs a game. The smallest average margin since 1980.
Games one and two not in that category in this World Series. Seven to one, then seven to two. But back at it. Three two in the ninth and a strength from Affelt to Hosmer. Holland getting ready on the right. He's the closer for the Royals, the closer for the Giants getting ready on the left. We may see Casilla before the end of this top of the ninth. Strike two. Well, you know, Affelt's got the next two hitters, the next being Hosmer and then Mustak is for sure, the two lefties. And we'll see. Wind right now is howling out to left. It'll be the heart of the order for the Giants in the bottom of this ninth inning. Posey, Sandoval, and Pence. Ball one. How about they bat by Eric Hosmer? Look at the win there. That sixth inning, 11 pitches. Back to the inning, Joe. Alex Gordon in the two hole. Ned Yo said, We hope to get him pitches to hit with Escobar on base. Exactly how it worked out. And then Hosmer with the big 11 pitch RBI. Shattered back. Left side. Top play. Weird. Sandoval for out number one. Wow. How about those hands? That was incredible. He starts to reach with the glove. And he gets a nasty spin. Watch the spin. And he reacts with the bare hand to snatch it and make the throw. My goodness. When it was hit off the bat, I'm saying, you better catch it in the air. You're not going to have a play. Look at the English on that, Tom. Wow. Have we seen some defense in this game today, infield and outfield? Don't let the body fool you. That is one terrific athlete. Santa Panda came paused up. <laughs> but when we talked to him before game two, he was proud of his hand eye coordination. Yes. You were asking him, how do you do all these things? A guy who can pitch left handed. So talented he is. What a good athlete. Beloved here in San Francisco in the final year of his contract. He said, my hand eye coordination is strong. Need to show it right there. Here's a fly ball into right. It'll hang up off the bat of Mustakis. The wind pushes it to out. And we look ahead to tomorrow night on a Saturday night in San Francisco, game four. And the starters, we are down to Jason Vargas, the left hander, against Ryan Vogelsong, the right hander. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. And that's it for Affel. He faced four. He retired four. He worked in game two through one pitch and finished off the at-bat that Linsicum could not. Here he is trying to keep it a one-run game. And Fonte takes a strike. But we've seen some pitching and some defense tonight. Starters were good. Relievers good. Defense of Kane and right. We saw the play by Sandoval moments ago at third. Good, terrific. These two teams are sharp. The 0 1. That is strike two. A reminder fans, upload your best. Take me out to the ball game, and you might be featured in game four. Of this World Series, that's tomorrow night. Go to tmobile.com slash the big seven. How good will the bottom of the ninth inning be? Seems to never be easy for the Royals with Holland. And the big bats are coming up for the Giants. At the moment, down by one. The 0-2. And when all three pitched this postseason, 8 and 0. For Greg Holland, his last blown save was July 24th against the Indians. He had saved 26 straight since then.
And that's what you're going to see from Greg Hall, and he's going to live on the corners. He's not the guy that's going to reach back and throw 95 by you. He has that in his arsenal, but he's going to live on the corners with cutters and splits. To his left is good. One away. Tom, you think about all the criticism Ned Yost gets. And he certainly got it from various sources in that wild card game. But just tonight, the touch he has with that bullpen to bring Herrera in in the sixth. He saved Finnegan. Finnegan bridged the gap to get to Wade Davis and now Greg Holland. He's done a masterful job with this Kansas City bullpen and this roster. Yeah, absolutely. Aggressive bringing Herrera into the game, but knowing when to take him out and the confidence in the kid, Finnegan, to bail him out. Here's Sandoval. Ball one low. We saw that just watching. This is it. As we said, the script is already in. Giants have to find a way to somehow cracked the big three in the back of this bullpen. Now with one. Who better to do it than Sandoval? Steady chunks one to the right side. Holland flips for out number two. And the Royals are one out away from the two games to one lead. Hollis falls so far off that that ball was a tapper. It was just a routine play to him with his delivery. Well, here's Hunter Pence. As Holland tries to save his seventh game of this postseason. In case you're wondering, Greg Holland has not allowed a home run in his last 43 appearances, including this postseason. Hence, homered in game one. Strike one from Holland. There's that slider. He knows that is a dead fastball hitter at the plate right now. Get ahead slider. The wipeout one travels out of the zone. He went around strike two and the Royals one strike away. A well pitched game. The front end at the back end. Great defense. The Royals up by a run as the count goes to one and two on Hunter Pence. So you were talking about him not giving up home runs. He lives on the edge. And I think he pitches according to the ballpark in Kansas City and here. You're going to beat me, you beat me to the big park. First career postseason win. This was a great game for baseball. The pace it was played at, the execution, the defense. When pitchers are sharp, defenders are sharp. The race to six innings, and the Royals won it. And how about Jeremy Guthrie, the start he gave this Royals team? Guthrie got into the sixth. And then the bullpen took over. Herrera bailed the starter out in the sixth inning tonight, just as he did as they celebrate in Kansas City in game two. So it's Herrera again in the sixth inning, stopping the bleeding, and then the rest of the guys do their thing. And I tell you what, on the Giants' side, this brings Madison Bumgarner into the conversation for possible game four. That question was asked of manager Bruce Bochy before the game Would you bring Bumgarner back? on short rest tomorrow in game four and he did not completely shut the door on that not likely but not impossible down to Aaron Andrews Joe thanks so much here with Eric Hoffner happy birthday by the way appreciate that thank you very much absolutely uh, six inning big one for you one for four with an RBI tonight your breaking out party in the postseason continues why what has it been 
in October for you. Why? Uh, we're just battling. We got a guys, a bunch of guys in here that are battling, and uh, you know we're getting key hits in key situations. You know we're, uh, you know Gordo had the big hit there, guy on second, and. Anytime we got the bullpen coming in, we can get some insurance runs. Those are huge. You know, Ned Yost told us today it just all seemed to come together for you guys in the wild card game in that seventh inning, and just you guys are continuing to grow. What have you figured out here about yourselves in the World Series? Uh, we just show no fear. You know, that was a crazy game, and uh, you know we had our back against the wall. We had our season on the line, and you know we continued to battle. And you know it seemed like once that game was over, over it was uh, it was an exhale for us. And you know you put us in a series. We know we have a dangerous team when this postseason baseball comes, and we're just trying to get leads and hand them off to our bullpen. And they were a dangerous team here, the Giants. They had won six straight World Series games until tonight. How big is this? Huge. You know, they uh, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. Even when we we're up three nothing, and they came back fighting there. It's uh, you know you know these games are never going to be easy. So that's a tough team, and these games are going to come down to the wire like this. But this is a huge win for us, and uh, you know hats off to the bullpen for holding it down for us. So you get the win. What are you going to do tonight for the birthday? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm just glad my family's here. They got to see it, and I'm just glad we got a win of all things. Congrats. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, Joe. All right, guys. Thank you. Well, what a game. If you like baseball, you had to love this one. No matter who you're rooting for, this was a well-pitched, well-played, well-defensed ball game here in Game 3. Timely hitting, and the Royals win on the road.